A warm good morning to one and all. Uh, myself Meenakshi Surinder. This assignment is done by me and my friend Surya Ji. So our assignment topic is high resolution lithography. So first I would like to discuss about what the lithography means or what the word literally means. So the word lithography has its origin in the Greek word litho which means stone. Lithography therefore literally means carving a stone or writing on a stone. So hence it is a top down approach. Another name for lithography is patterning and this is an important step in IC fabrication. So the ability to pattern smaller and smaller region is what drives the miniaturization of circuit. So now we can look about uh, the, uh, the definition of lithography. Lithography is the process of transferring patterns of geometric shape in a mask to a thin layer of radiation uh, covering the surface of a semiconductor wafer. So lithography is the process of transferring patterns of geometric shape in a mask. So transferring patterns of geometric shape the, uh, the, uh, in a mask to a thin layer of radiation. This thin layer of radiation can be a sensitive material which is called resist covering the surface of a semiconductor wafer. So lithography is extensively used in electronic industry so as to obtain integrated circuits. So for example, the metal interconnect structures on an integrated circuit are very complex and often use over 10 different layers of patterned metal. Now what is actually happening in lithography? The lithography technique involves transfer of some pre-designed geometrical pattern which is called a mask on a semiconductor. The commonly used semiconductor can be silicon or directly patterning often known as writing using suitable radiation. So by using a suitable radiation what is actually happening is that transfer of some pre-designed geometrical pattern on a semiconductor uh, or directly patterning. And uh, this geometry, a pre-designed geometrical pattern is called a mask. So mask is usually prepared by creating radiation, opaque and transparent regions on glass or some other material. Pre-designed patterns can be transferred on a substrate much faster as compared to direct writing. So direct writing being a slower process is overall expensive. So uh, pre-designed patterns can be transferred on a substrate uh, when compared to direct writing. So now uh, we are discussing about the principle and type of lithography. So first we can uh, study about the, the principle of lithography. The principle involved in the lithography technique is to expose a material sensitive to either electromagnetic radiation or to particles in some regions. So such a radiation sensitive material is known as resist. So uh, the expose a material sensitive to either electromagnetic radiation or to particles in some regions. So this uh, radiation sensitive material is known as resist. The selection of area to be exposed to radiation is made using a mask which is transparent in some regions and opaque in some other regions. So what is the speciality of this mask? This mask will be transparent in some regions and uh, it will be opaque in some uh, regions. So uh, by using this mask we are selecting the area which should be exposed to radiation. This causes selection exposure of the resist, making it weaker or stronger compared to unexposed material depending upon the type of resist being used. So by removing the exposed or unexposed material in suitable chemicals or plasma, desired pattern is obtained. So by using this suitable chemicals or plasma, uh, if the uh, unexposed material, in, uh, if we are using in chemicals, then it will be some other type of lithography and if we are using plasma, it will be some other type of lithography. So this may be done in a number of steps depending upon the pattern and material involved. So uh, there are three, mainly there are uh, lithography is classified into three types. Photolithography, electron wing lithography, X-ray lithography. Then photolithography is also called optical lithography, then electron beam lithography and X-ray lithography. 
So, uh, in the principle, we have already mentioned that we are using an electromagnetic radiation. If this electromagnetic radiation is a UV light source, then it will be uh, called photolithography. And in UV uh, photolithography, we are using uh, the suitable chemical is using as uh, by uh, by removing the exposed or unexposed material in suitable chemicals. In UV, if we are if we are uh, using or if we are uh, if we are doing photolithography, then uh, we are using a suitable chemical. Uh, chemical. Then in electron beam lithography, we are using plasma. Uh, and in X-ray lithography, we are using X-ray. So here, uh, three figures, three images are shown. In the first image, we can know, we know that uh, the, uh, the light source will be UV light source. So it is uh, photolithography. In the second figure, it is electron beam exposure. So we know that electron beam lithography is in uh, is shown in the second uh, figure. And in the third figure, it's it's given that extras are um, extras are using. So it is extra lithography. So now we are going to discuss about the first classification of lithography that is photolithography. Photolithography is a patterning process. Photosensitive polymer is selectively exposed to light through a mask, leaving a latent image in the polymer that can then be selectively dissolved to provide pattern access to an underlying substrate. So uh, in integrated circuit manufacturing, photolithography or optical lithography is a general term used for techniques that use light to produce minutely patterned uh, thin films of suitable material over a substrate uh, such as silicon wafer to protect selected areas of it during subsequent itching, uh, deposition or implantation operation. So typically ultraviolet light is used to transfer a geometric design from an optical mask to a light sensitive chemical. So the light sensitive chemical can be photoresist which is called photoresist. Uh, in which why we are called photoresist is that it is using UV light uh, as light source. Photo on the substrate. The photoresist either breaks down or hardens where it is exposed to light. So it, uh, when it is exposed to light it will either break down or harden. The pattern of film is then created by removing the softer parts of coating with appropriate solder. So conventional photoresist typically consists of three components. So basically, uh, conventional photoresist can be of three uh, can consist of three components: resin, sensitizer, and solvent. And photolithography process can be classified according to the type of light used, such as ultraviolet. Deep ultraviolet, extremely ultraviolet or extreme. The wavelength of light used determines the minimum feature size that can be formed in the photoresist. Then, uh, the another subclass of uh, photolithography is microlithography, and the general term for processes that generate patterned thin films. Then, other technologies in this broader classes include the use of steerable electron beams or more rarely nano imprinting interferences magnetic field or scanning probe. On a broader level, it may uh, compete with directly self-assembly of micro and nanostructures. So now we are going to share some fundamental principles of photolithography. So photolithography shares some fundamental principles with photography is in that pattern in the photoresist is created by exposing it to light, either directly by projection to a lens or by illuminating a mask placed directly over the substrate as a contact printer. The technique can also be seen as a high precision version of method used to make printed circuits. Uh, the name originated from a loose analogy with the traditional photographic method of producing plate for lithographic printing on paper. However, subsequent stages in the process have more in common with etching than with traditional lithography. And uh, the photo photolithography is most common method for semiconductor fabrication of integrated circuits, as I already mentioned, uh, ICs or chips, such as the solid state memories and microprocessors. So it can create uh, extremely small patterns down to a few tons of nanometers in size. So it provides precise control of the shape and size of objects. It creates and can create patterns over an entire wafer in a single step quickly and with a relatively low cost. In complex integrated circuits, the wafer may go through the photolithographic cycle as many as 50 times. So it is also an important technique for the fabrication of microscopic structures in general. 
such as microelectromechanical system. However, photolithography cannot be used in used to produce mask on surfaces that are not prefer perfectly flat and like all chip manufacturing processes it require extremely clean operating condition so this is what uh, i had uh, this is the general awareness of photolithography so basically photolithography the main idea of photolithography is that in photolithography uh, uv light is used as a source and um, photoresist is used as a chemical so next we can uh, we can go through the basic procedure of this photolithography the basic steps in photolithography can be first vapor cleaning then pre bake and primer coating photoresist spin coating soft bake alignment and exposure development hard bake pattern inspection these are steps that we have to go on through and uh, here it's a shown in figure the simplified illustration of dry aging using positive photoresist during a photolithography process in semiconductor microfabrication uh, and another one is the um, is the is procedure explaining uh, figure and i have also given a uh, youtube link for further studies so a single iteration of photolithography combines several steps in consequent sequences Modern clean rooms use automated robotic wafer track systems to coordinate the process. Uh, the procedure described here omits some advanced treatments such as thinning agent or edge bead removal. The photolithography process is carried out by the wafer track and steeper or scanner, and the wafer track system and the steeper scanner are installed side by side. Wafer track systems have been replaced by wafer coater developer systems which perform the same function. So first is about wafer cleaning. If organic or inorganic contaminants are present on the wafer surface, uh, so we know that many organic or inorganic contaminants will be present in this wafer surface. They are usually removed by wet chemical treatment. So uh, the wet treatment, uh, for example, like RCA clean procedure based on solution containing hydrogen peroxide. Then other solutions made with trichloroethylene, acetone, or methanol can also be used to clean. The next is preparation. The wafer is initially heated to a temperature sufficient to drive off any moisture that may be present on the wafer surface. First, we have to heat the wafer uh, in order to uh, drive off the moisture which is present on the wafer surface. So, 150 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes is sufficient. Wafers that have been in storage must be chemically cleaned to remove contamination. A liquid or gaseous addition promoter such as uh, trimethylsilyl amine is applied to promote addition of the photoresist to the wafer. The surface layer of silicon dioxide on the wafer reacts with HMDS to form trimethylated silicon dioxide, a highly water repellent layer, not unlikely the layer of axonic castings. This water repellent layer prevents surface developers from penetrating between the photoresist layer and wafer surface, this preventing so called lifting of small photoresist structures in the project. So in order to ensure the development of the image, it is best covered and placed over a hot plate and let it dry while stabilizing the temperature at 120 degrees Celsius. So next is photoresist spin coating or photoresist application. The wafer is covered with the photoresist by spin coating. Thus the top layer of resist is quickly ejected from the wafer's edge while the bottom layer still creeps slowly readily along the wafer. In this way, any bump or ridge of resist is removed, leaving a very flat layer. However, vicious films may result in large edge beads whose planarization has physical limits. Finer thickness is also determined by the evaporation of liquid solvents from the resist. Uh, so, for very small dense features, less than 125 or so nanometer, lower resist thickness less than 0.5 microns or needed to overcome collapse effects such a high aspect ratio. So, typical aspect ratios are less than 4 is to 1. The photoresist coated wafer is then pre-baked to drive off excess photoresist solvent, typically at 90 to 100 degrees Celsius, for 30 to 60 seconds on a hot plate. So, uh, for uh, 30 to 60 seconds, that for one minute, on uh, we have to be, uh, we have to uh, the photoresist coated wafer is then uh, baked to drive off the excess photoresist solvent at typical 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. So next is exposure and developing. So the third step is 
After pre-baking, the photoresist is exposed to a pattern of intense light. Exposure to light causes a chemical change that allows some of the photoresist to be removed by a special solution called a developer by allergy with a photographic developer. In positive photoresist, the most common type becomes soluble in the developer when exposed with a negative photoresist and exposed to regions are soluble in the developer. So positive photoresist will, uh, which is a uh, common type, becomes soluble in the developer when exposed. And with a negative photoresist, unexposed to regions are soluble in the developer. Uh, a post-exposure bake, PEB, is performed before developing, typically to help reduce standing wave phenomena caused by the destructive and constructive interferences patterns of the incident light. So, in case of deep ultraviolet lithography, chemically amplified resist chemistry is used. This process is much more sensitive to PEB time, temperature and delay as most of the exposure reaction actually occurs in PEB. So, the, uh, from preparation until this step, the photolithography procedure has been carried out by two machines, the photolithography sweeper or scanner and the cotton developer. The two machines are usually installed side by side. So, um, the developed chemistry is delivered on a spinner much like photoresist. Developers originally often contain the sodium hydroxide. However, sodium is considered an extremely undesirable contaminant in uh, MOS FET fabrication because it degrades the insulating properties of gate uh, oxide. So metal ion free developers such as tetra methyl ammonium hydroxide are now used. The resulting wafer is then hard baked, hard baked if a non chemically amplified resistor was used, typically at 120 to 180 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes. The hard bake solidifies the remaining photoresist to make a more durable protective layer in future ion implantation with chemical itching or plasma itching. So the next step is itching implantation. In itching a liquid or plasma, chemical agent removes the uppermost layer of the substrate in the area that are not protected by photoresist. Uh, so in uh, semiconductor fabrication, dry itching techniques are generally used as they can be made anisotropic in order to avoid uh, significant undercutting of photoresist pattern. So this is essential when the width of features to be defined is similar to or less than the thickness of material being itched. So wet itch processes are generally isotropic in nature which is often indispensable for microelectromechanical systems where uh, suspended switches must be released from the underlying layer. The development of low defectivity and isotropic dry itch process has enabled the ever smaller features defined photolithographically in the resist to be transferred to the substrate material. Then photoresist removal. After a photoresist is no longer needed, it must be removed from the substrate. This usually requires a liquid resist stripper, which chemically alters the resist so that it no longer adheres to the substrate. Alternately, the photoresist may be removed by a plasma containing oxygen, which oxidizes it. This process is called ashing and resembles dry itching. The use of 1 methyl 2 pyrrolidine uh, solvent for photoresist is another method used to remove an image. When the resistor has been dissolved, the solvent can be removed by heating to 80 degrees Celsius without leaving any residue. So, uh, uh, the experimental methods of photolithography has been def uh, photolithography has been defecting predictions of its demise for many years. So, for instance, by the early 1930s, many in the semiconductor industry has had come to believe that features smaller than one micron could not be printed optically. So, modern techniques used XMI laser lithography already print features with the dimensions a fraction of the wavelength of light used, an amazing optical feat. So, new techniques such as immersion lithography, dual tone resist, and multiple patterning continue to improve the resolution of 193 nanometer lithography. Meanwhile, current research is exploring alternatives to conventional UV such as electron beam lithography, X ray lithography, extreme ultraviolet lithography, and ion projection lithography. So, extreme ultraviolet lithography is in mass production used as a 2020 by Samsung. So, uh, 
In 2001, uh, while we are discussing about the economy, in 2001, NIST publication has reported that uh, photolithography process constituted about 35% of total cost of a wafer processing cost. So, this is uh, what about photolithography. So, basically, there are uh, wafer cleaning, pre bake, and primer coating, photoresist spin coating, then soft bake, then alignment and exposure, development, hard bake, pattern inspection. This is all about uh, photography, photolithography. So here also it is showing that uh, first we are preparing a wafer, then we are applying photo uh, photo resist, then align photo mask, then expose to UV light, uh, then develop and remove photo resist exposed to UV light, uh, then each exposed outside, then remove remaining photo resist. So these are the uh, steps which we which basically these are the steps that is undertaking in photolithography. So. Uh, that's about uh, photolithography. So next is electron beam lithography. So the many application of nano fabrication techniques like single electron devices, electrical connection of individual molecules or ultra high density storage media. So in this context, electron beam lithography EBL could be a tool of the best quality uh, combining a reasonable writing speed with a possible high level of integration of complex devices. So what is electron beam lithography? So it is some, uh, it is also known as A-beam lithography. Uh, it is simple, simple method that is it's the practice of scanning a focused beam of electrons to draw custom shapes on a surface covered with an electron sensitive film that is called resist. This electron beam changes the solubility of that resist and enabling selective removal of either the exposed or non-exposed regions of the resist by immersing it in a solvent. The purpose of with the photolithography is to create very small structures in the resist that can um, subsequently be transferred to the substrate material often by itching. So, in this figure, it shows uh, a side view of the systematic illustration of electron beam lithography. That is, an electron beam is focused on a resist film to create a pattern by exposing the dot by dot. So, these the parts of the uh, electron beam lithography uh, that is, first have a electron beam source, uh, first condensed lens, uh, then a beam blanker, electron beam, second condensed lens an aperture, deflector and final condensed lens and also have a resist. So these are the steps in electron beam lithography that is substrate cleaning, resist application, post apply bake, exposure of A-beam, post exposure bake, development and pattern transfer. So when you closely observe these pictures, uh, it shows uh, the electron beam lithography process. So first the electron beam resist is spin coated onto the sample surface that are shown in the figure A. Then the sample is then exposed to by the electron beam in the displayed pattern shape like an S that is shown in the figure B. This sample is developed so that the affected area of the resist is washed away in case of any positive E beam resist as in shows in the figure C. And finally a subsequent itch or in the case of Figure D, deposition step affected only the area of the water that no longer contain resist. So the resist is lifted off leaving a sample surface with the desired itch or deposition in only the desired areas that are shown in the figure F. So the electron beam is focused mainly into the smallest cone possible so that it comes to a point at the sample surface. In an ideal system, the beam would be only a single electron in width. Since this is not possible to achieve due to the beam spreading, the beam uh, does become an important factor to considering during the EBL. The electron beam does is essentially a measure of the number of electrons that strike a linear patch or an area on the surface. So the next method uh, is X-ray lithography. So, X-ray lithography is an advanced version of optical lithography in which shorter wavelengths are mainly used. So, in this method, a special type of mask is used with the different local X-ray absorption areas 
to define that pattern. So this pattern is replicated on an X-ray sensitive material that is called a resist which is previously deposited on a substrate. So it is usually uh, used as silicon buffer something. Uh, then the X-ray passing through the pattern falls on the resist. It may cause cross linking for negative resist or bone breaking for positive resist. Depending on the chemical nature of the resist, after exposure, the whole thing is dipped in a specific solvent and depending on its nature, either the exposed area resist will dissolve, the cre dissolve and create a pattern or vice versa. The other part of the resist will stay intact. This is how X-ray lithography creates nano patterns on the subtree. So these are the steps in X-ray lithography. So it is simply the process is the X-ray illuminate a mass placed in the proximity of a resistor quarter buffer. Then the X-ray are broadbanded typically from a compacted radiation source allowing a rapid exposure. Then the mass consists of an X-ray absorber. Typically it is made up of gold or other components like tungsten on a membrane that is transparent to the X-rays typically up to a silicon carburetor or diamond. The pattern on the mask is written by direct right electron beam lithography onto a resist that is developed by the conventional semiconductor process. The membrane can be stretched for an overall accuracy. So uh, the main advantages of lithography, it is a very fast process uh, other than other lithography methods. So uh, in the addition to flexibility and quality, the other main advantages of lithography printing is the price point uh, with the volume printing. Uh, this is cheaper. Uh, it per unit cost for larger prints runs in a uh, reprints are cost effective as the prints will reuse the existing place and the image produced as very clear and sharp images. Likewise, other any process, it is also have disadvantages. So the main disadvantages of the lithography, if you want to print in small runs or in small numbers, it cannot be used. It is mainly focused on the high prints, uh, high, uh, large print runs, uh, and the materials are used for uh, usually for the lithography are highly complex. So we need experts and knowledge people for the uh, method. By concluding this assignment, I want to share that lithography is widely used around the world for printing books, catalogs and posters because of its high quality results and fast turnaround. And it is take longer to set up than the digital printers but it's quicker to do high quantities of high quality in repeated times. So we are concluding our assignment here. Thank you for listening.